The single most serious domestic issue facing the U.S. government, and American society in general, is the high cost of health care. The United States has the most expensive health care system in the world, and those costs are expected to grow even higher. Health care bills are the second leading cause of personal bankruptcy, and they threaten to bankrupt the federal government as well. In this presentation, we will look at the reason health care is so expensive and what are ways to deal with this enormous problem. To give you a sense of how much Americans spend on their health, in 2012, health care spending amounted to 18% of the gross domestic product of the United States. That means in 2012, Americans spent over $3 trillion on medical treatment, or more than $9,000 per person. Even worse, that percentage is expected to climb to 20% of GDP, or $13,000 per person, by the end of the decade. As seen on this graph, no other country in the world spends more than 12% on health care. Both the U.S. government and the state of North Carolina spend nearly 25% of their total annual budgets on providing health care to elderly or poor Americans through either Medicare or Medicaid. As health care costs increase, this portion of the budget increases also, squeezing out other budgetary items. Unless brought under control, health care expenses will be the biggest driver of increasing government debt. There are many reasons the U.S. has such a uniquely expensive health care system. The first and most important reason is that the United States, for the most part, operates its health care system as a for-profit, market-driven, capitalistic enterprise. Almost every other industrialized nation has a non-profit health care system managed by the government with price controls. In the U.S., by contrast, health care providers function as private businesses that can charge whatever they choose. Each individual service or treatment you receive for an illness or injury will have an individual price attached with a profit margin built into every aspect of medical care. The two exceptions to this for-profit system are Medicaid, government-managed health insurance for the poor, and Medicare, government-managed health insurance for senior citizens. These two programs are examples of socialized medicine where the government sets prices. Because the government sets prices lower than doctors can earn in the private market, however, some physicians refuse to see Medicaid or Medicare patients. Almost all other industrialized nations have government-managed health insurance for all their citizens, essentially Medicare for everyone, and doctors have no choice but to participate. This is the primary reason that other countries spend less on health care than we do. The second main cause of high health care costs are the high number of Americans who lack health insurance. Although this number has fallen due to the Affordable Care Act, over 13 percent of all American adults still do not have health insurance, which is over 30 million people. Uninsured people raise everyone's costs in several ways. First, since they lack insurance, they generally wait longer to get help which makes their health problems more advanced and more costly to treat. Secondly, since they lack insurance, rather than go to a doctor's office, they go to the emergency room, and the emergency room is the most expensive type of treatment. Third, since they lack insurance, they are very unlikely to pay the large bill. The local hospital in Silva, for example, collects six cents on the dollar for treatment provided to uninsured patients. Those unpaid medical bills don't simply disappear. They are passed along to everyone else in the form of higher costs as hospitals make up their losses by charging more to the people who pay. 
It's the same as Walmart charging more for everything they sell to make up for their losses from theft and shoplifting. Medical care for which people don't pay is not free. It is paid by the rest of us. Nations with universal health insurance for all their citizens do not have this problem, which is another reason their costs are significantly lower. Doctor specialization plays a part in increasing costs. Doctors specialize because they make more money, but that means we're also paying more money. Fifty years ago, you'd simply go to your family physician. Today, you see a number of specialists for a single problem. My second wife broke a bone in her foot and visited her primary care physician, who then sent her to an orthopedist, a bone doctor, and a podiatrist, a foot doctor, who each charged separately for the visits, even though in the end the only treatment was to use crutches until the bone healed. Another cause for our expensive health care system is due to pharmaceuticals. Unlike Canada and European nations, U.S. drug companies are allowed to protect their patents on new drugs for 10 years before a generic knockoff can be made. Since name brand drugs are much more expensive than generics, Americans spend 81% more for medications than Canadians and Europeans. This is also the reason that one-third of Americans say they did not fill a prescription or skipped doses in the past year. Some of the high cost is because of new treatments, which are often very expensive. For example, Solvati is a new drug that effectively treats hepatitis C, previously considered incurable. However, the drug also costs $1,000 per pill and $84,000 for a full course of treatment. Similarly, people who carry genetic diseases can have their fertilized embryos tested for the presence of the disease, but the test costs over $17,000. No one wants to go without the best treatment, but many people cannot afford the expense. Should the government help pay? or should these treatments become available for only the wealthy. Finally, the demographics of health care are getting worse. Baby boomers like me are getting older and joining Medicare. Over the next 25 years, the elderly population of the United States will double. Although senior citizens get fewer bouts of colds and the flu, they have more chronic illnesses that require recurring treatment. Unless health care costs are significantly lowered, Medicare will bankrupt the federal budget in a couple decades. The Affordable Care Act attempts to lower health care costs primarily by increasing the number of Americans who have health insurance. It is estimated that the Act has helped over 9 million Americans obtain insurance one way or the other who did not have insurance before. However, that still leaves about 30 million Americans uninsured, and there are many Americans who resist being forced to get insurance even though remaining uninsured makes health care more expensive for everyone. As long as health care in the United States remains primarily a for-profit business enterprise, costs will be difficult to control. In a normal market, competition between providers and the ability to choose cheaper alternatives helps to control prices. But those kinds of market incentives do not work in health care. There is no real competition between doctors and hospitals, no one shops around for the cheapest hospital or cardiologist after having a heart attack, just as doctors and hospitals do not publish their prices. Similarly, no one is going to shop at the dollar store for cancer treatment. While Americans cannot agree what to do, health care costs continue to rise. The Affordable Care Act has helped them rise more slowly, but it does not address many of the reasons we have the most expensive health care system in the world. Unless the problems are addressed, however, high-quality health care may become a commodity only afforded 
by the rich.